Tom Longboat, Going for Gold, by Barbara Henner. Tom Longboat was the most famous athlete in his day, but prejudice against Aboriginal peoples was common in Longboat's time. He had to battle not only competitors on the racetrack, but also racism. Often, his successes were credited to the white men who trained him, instead of to his own talent and drive. Longboat's family was Onondaga. He was born in Oshwekin on the Six Nations Reserve near Brantford, Ontario. His family had to work very hard to maintain their small farm. They had no horse, so jobs like plowing and harvesting had to be done by hand. After his father died, Longboat often had to stay home from school to help his mother on the farm. When he was 12, Longboat began classes at an Anglican mission boarding school in Brantford. He was unhappy there, and left after less than one year. He spent the next few years working as a farm laborer. While attending an agricultural fair, Longboat discovered competitive running. He met Bill Davis, a Mohawk from Oshwekin. Davis had competed in the Boston Marathon in 1901. On Victoria Day in 1905, Longboat decided to enter a race in Caledonia near his home. He finished second. Longboat trained using a program of jogging and long-distance walking. He won the Caledonia race in 1906. He continued to train while spending the summer working on a farm. In the fall of 1906, he entered the annual Around the Bay race in Hamilton, Ontario. The 32-kilometer event attracted all the top runners in Canada. With about 8 kilometers to go, Longboat exploded past the race favorite and won by 3 minutes. Ten days after his win in Hamilton, Longboat entered the 24-kilometer Ward Marathon in Toronto. His time knocked two minutes off the previous record. Longboat moved to Toronto and began formal training. When he entered the famous Boston Marathon in April 1907, he was favored to win. His time broke the record by a full five minutes. When he returned to Toronto after the race, the whole city celebrated his victory. Throughout 1907, he continued to win a series of shorter races. He was also favored to win the marathon at the 1908 Olympics in London, England. Please look at the picture at the top of page number two. The caption reads, Tom Longboat shown in the lead in the 1907 Boston Marathon. Longboat won the marathon and set a new record. During the summer of 1907, Longboat began to train with Tom Flanagan. When Longboat collapsed during the Olympic Marathon, many people were suspicious. Some even accused Flanagan of drugging the great runner in order to win bets he had placed against him. Nothing was ever proven. Flanagan would continue to manage Longboat for almost two years. Longboat considered retiring after the Olympic disappointment but Flanagan urged him to continue. Soon, Longboat joined the professional circuit. He took part in a series of races that would prove he was the best in the world. But the marathon craze was nearing its end, and he retired as a runner in 1913. The First World War began in 1914. In 1916, Longboat joined the Canadian Army. Much of his military career was spent winning races for Army sports teams. However, he served in France as a dispatch runner carrying messages. Longboat was wounded twice and was once declared dead. Look at the small medal on the bottom right of page 3. Let's read the caption. Tom Longboat received the Canadian Expeditionary Force CEF Award for his service as a dispatch carrier in France during World War I. 
As a professional runner, Longboat had earned about $20,000. Even after all his expenses were paid, he still had a large sum of money left. He had been very generous with his income. He lost most of his money, though, on bad business investments. By 1919, he was another Canadian soldier looking for a job. In 1926, after working briefly on a farm in Alberta, Longboat found a permanent job with the streets department in Toronto. He was content working outdoors and took pride that he was able to support his family during the Great Depression. Tom Longboat worked for the City of Toronto until his bad back forced him to retire in 1945. With his health failing, Longboat moved his family back to the Six Nations Reserve. He died there at the age of 61. His courage and achievements continue to inspire Canadians. Let's look at the picture at the top of page 4. Let's read the caption. The Great Depression of the 1930s led to widespread job loss. Thousands of North Americans would line up for hours waiting for free super bread. Let's look at the picture on the bottom of page 4. Let's read the caption. Chelsea Taylor Payne won the Tom Longboat Award as the Aboriginal Female Athlete of the Year for Nova Scotia in 2004. Try this. Tom Longboat is a member of the Canadian Hall of Fame and the Indian Hall of Fame. Design a medal or trophy to honor his accomplishments.